नमस्कार और वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू प्रेजेंट हियर हु आर वॉचिंग दिस लाइव सेशन होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर फिट एंड फाइन एंड जस्ट इंजॉइंग योर डेज विद योर फैमिली स्टे एट होम माई नेम इज रचना सिन्हा एंड दिस इज द वेरी फर्स्ट लाइव सेशन ऑन दिस चैनल एंड आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू टॉपिक ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस दैट इज एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ प्रोग्राम बट बिफोर आई go to the topic itself i would like to give you a few of how our journey of this one hour journey is going to be so in the first part of this journey the one hour session the live session we are going here i shall be talking about the importance of the topic of the video you are watching right now then in the second part of my discussion i would like to tell you that what exactly the topic is i would like to present the topic in front of you so that you may understand it properly then in the third section i will talk to you about what the exact process is there which we are going to discuss today and after that in the fourth section of my this session i would talk about what we learned in the entire session how the entire session was there what were the different topics that we started we discussed and after that at the end of the session i would like to take some of the questions from you and try to answer that uh so here my name is rachna sinha and again i am in front of you going to start the journey so please stay with me for the entire journey so that we can make it interactive together so coming to uh, the first part of my journey of this uh, live discussion where as i told you that i will be telling you about the importance that why you are watching this live session of mine uh see if you are a student especially of class 11th or 12th of any of the board might be uh, cbsc board or the icsc board or any of the state board uh this session is going to be very important for you why because whatever the uh, topic i am going to discuss with you is basically the part of your class 11 syllabus okay uh again after watching this session when you will come to the end of this session you would be able to understand the topic very well that what exactly the topic is how the program gets executed and of course uh you would be able to understand so many technical terminologies that will be come across within this period of time and at the end of the session also you would be able to understand the difference between the compiler and the interpreter itself and that is going to make you fetch more marks in the examination why because from the examination point of view it is also very important because you are going to get you are going to have at least two or three marks question from this particular topic okay uh, and you are going to answer your topic in such a technical way that you are definitely going to make marks now from the student perspective it is quite important but it is then the same way it is important for those who are not students as a general people just like me even if you are a housewife you can watch this video why how it is going to be important for you and why should you in best one hour with me um, so there is the reason there are so many reasons i can give you but i would like to give you only one or two reasons right now okay the very first reason you can watch this video along with your kids if they are in such classes like 8 9 10 till 12 or even not so young that they could not be uh, able to understand the topic but you can sit with your child and watch the same video so that you can also understand that what exactly the topic is and what type of problem does your child face or what is his understandability limit or the level and you can also help your child understanding it again the very first thing even if even though it is a technical subject and a technical topic but still i would try my best to give you the perspective in a, such a smooth and easy language so that you can any of the person can understand the process properly and you are definitely going to have so much knowledge so what good if you start your day by um, having so much knowledge after all you are enjoying your days over there at home with all of your family members so this was the first 
face of my discussion today is that why we should watch this video I and mean, why you are going to be the part of my journey or the one hour journey we are going to have together okay uh, now coming to the next part of my session over here the second part I told you that I'm going to introduce the topic well so that you may understand that basically what we are going to learn today so as you told as I told you that the topic is about the execution of the program okay mm. so for starting this video so starting the session I would like to give you a question right now okay okay imagine a scenario where there are two persons okay one you can think that one is the instructor wants to give some instruction and second is the worker who is supposed to execute the instructions given to him what happens if the instructor who is giving the instructions in a language that is basically not understandable to the worker itself so what is going to happen and what if the worker who is answering to the instructor is in such a language that the instruction instructor itself is not able to understand oh such a messy situation don't it don't you think so now my question to all of you is that what you are going to do in that particular situation what options you are going to give them so that the communication between them should be established properly the instruction should be able to give the instruction and that instructions must be understandable to the worker itself so that the communication should start properly now this is the question keep on thinking the options there are lots of options lots of technologies that can be used lots of gadgets itself so now it's your time to start thinking about the answer and keep on thinking and keep it with you okay at the last uh, portion of the session i will come to you and take your options and then we shall discuss okay uh, so this was the basic scenario that we are going to face yes of course this is the same situation when it comes to the computer system when we want our computer system to execute any of the instructions of us it is very difficult to give it instructions why so because whatever the instructions we are going to give it it is in such a language that is basically not understandable by the computer itself and now here i would like to tell you see coming to the point what actually happens see suppose a user wants to give some instructions to the computer system to execute it and get the job done okay then whatever the instruction a user write it has to be written in a programming language okay any of the programming language suppose the c c plus plus java c sharp Perl, so many so many lots of prologue or so many languages are there okay so whatever the instructions are there that are to be given to the computer is supposed to be written in the form of a program with the help of some programming language okay now the code written or the program written in any of the programming language is not understandable to the computer itself why because it is simple a machine okay it is an electronic device that works with the help of electricity and it can understand only the language of the voltages high and low that can be convertible convertible in the digital form in the zeros and ones so the language what it understands is basically the zero and ones okay now the problem the same problem the same scenario but i gave you that time that how to establish the communication and this is what we are going to discuss today okay so we are going to discuss that how the program written in one of the programming language gets converted to the language the code that is written in machine understandable language okay so as uh, if i am going to face that type of scenario i am going to give an option that i will introduce a translator between them okay the same thing is being done with the computer system there is a mechanism of translating the high level language into the low level language now what is high level language 
high level language programs means the program the code that has been written using those programming languages like c c++ java python etc okay now it has to be uh, converted into the low level language that is the machine language or the language of zeros and ones okay for that purpose what happens that we are having a translation phase in between okay and this translation process is further divided into different phases okay now each phase takes some input process it and produces a output okay after the processing it produces an output which becomes the input for the next phase okay in this way there is a chain reaction taking place i mean a chain execution is there happening like one phase is doing one work and then to the next phase then passing on to the next phase passing on to the next phase and in this way the translation is completed okay so now what actually are these phases let me tell you the very first phase is known as pre processing phase okay the second phase is known as compilation phase okay the third phase is known as assembly phase then fourth we are having linking phase and then the loading phase okay it means that to change the high level program to low level program the translation is going on which is a process comprising of different phases okay the first phase is pre processing phase the second phase is compilation phase the third one is the assembly phase the fourth one is the linking phase and the fifth one is the loading phase i think you are clear oh all of you are so intelligent i knew it i knew it okay so coming to the first phase what happens in the pre processing phase as the name suggests pre processing it means before processing pre means before and processing i mean before processing a step this is a very important very important step what happens in this phase that uh, we try the source code uh, now what is source code the program written in the high level language is known as source code clear to you okay so the source code is taken as input okay and it has been cleaned okay it gets ready for the further processing by cleaning it and by completing it now what is the meaning of cleaning and completing over here see cleaning uh, means uh, i can tell you in the way try to think it like that whenever we write a program okay whenever we write a program we try to write different comments over there these comments make the programming code readable okay at any point of time if you will go through the entire code using these comments you can understand that what exactly the code is doing okay any layman can understand the code by going through the comments in the same way as you write your comment over here and going through that comment i can understand oh how it is going on okay so please do keep on writing the comments over here and keep on giving the likes okay so what happens that in a program when we write so many comments those are basically means for only for reading purpose okay for understanding the code it has nothing to do with the execution of the program okay and sometimes we do have a habit of writing programs leaving so many white spaces over there so that it looks nice okay so that is also not usable in the at the time of execution okay so these parts are being removed from our code in that very phase of pre processing during the phase of pre processing from the source code all the comments are being removed all the extra white spaces are being removed and then comes the turn for completing it so what is the meaning of completing a code see what happens actually when we write a program after writing some of the comments on the top of the program yeah, yes this this program is going is meant for so and so written by so and so on so and so date 
okay what we write actually for writing any program sometimes we need so many libraries so different different functions okay those are the part of some predefined libraries and for using those functions in our program we do need to just call those libraries and get it linked with our program so that we can use the part defined over there okay for that purpose what happen sometimes we write some statement like that import so and so file or include so and so header file okay so these are the lines in our code which are basically meant for linking those libraries calling those libraries or functions in our program so that we can use it later so at the time of execution there is no use of it actually basically these are the process of getting it ready okay so before execution we need those libraries to be called here and linked with our program so that at the time of execution we must have those functions in our hand okay like as we try to prepare any of the dish what do we do we try all the preparations over there beforehand we keep all the preparations beforehand so that at the time of cooking or at the time of preparing any other thing we are just we can just get it and do it like that okay in the same way so at the pre processing phase what happens that we Uh, the program basically what does that it link it execute those lines and just link all the libraries what is required in our executed program okay now one more thing when we write a program sometimes we use some type of constants okay or any type of uh, such type of constant constant th those are also been defined in some languages or some libraries sorry pehle so what we do that those lines get executed and whatever the constant we are going to use it it is going to be pasted in your um, program itself and get the code entirely ready in this way the first phase the pre processing phase makes your source code ready for the next phase now moving to the next phase okay so what we learned that at the starting of the first phase what was our input our input was the source code okay after cleaning it and completing it what we are having in our hand a code that is entirely complete and devoid of those comments and white spaces over there and all the libraries are added all the required codes have been pasted so now we are having a code like that so this is the output of the first phase okay now this output is going to be the input for the next phase and what is the next phase here see the next phase over here is known as the compilation phase now the compilation phase itself comprises of two sub phases okay now the second phase that is the compilation phase itself comprises of two different sub phases and what are those sub phases okay keep on giving me like like that i really love that i am feeling motivated <laughs> thank you so much okay so the second phase the compilation phase the sub phases that are there are known as the very first sub phase of the compilation phase is known as the analysis phase okay and the second sub phase is known as the synthesis phase so what is going on here in the analysis phase and in the synthesis phase see when we talk about the analysis phase what basically happens is that it analyzes the code how does it analyzes and why it analyzes see for analysis actually what happens that like in any of the language you can um, understand you can take a reference of any of the language if you are going to write some sentences or a paragraph suppose in english you want to write so you are going to write different sentences okay and each sentence is made up of some words and those words may be uh, of any of the category i mean it may be subject or predicate or the verb or the different kind of parts of the speeches in the same way 
when we write our instructions in a program when we write commands when we write instructions in a program it is made up of different different small small words and these words are known as basically keywords or tokens okay a general term is tokens for those words. now tokens are also of different categories like it may be an identifier or it may be a literal or it may be a punctuator or it may be a operator something like that so these are the categories of those keywords so what happens in the analysis phase that whatever the code is given to this phase it break the entire code on those keywords okay word by word breaking of the entire code is been done and a table is maintained that is known as symbol table okay in this symbol table basically there is the information regarding the entire code how in each line how many keywords are there what are those keywords etc okay so these type of information are been analyzed with the help of this analysis phase of compilation phase okay at the end of this phase what happens that we are having a symbol table for the entire code that how many keywords are there what are the categories and l what are the ordering of those keywords in our instructions what we have written something like that okay now coming to the next phase that is the sub phase that is the another sub phase of the compilation phase that is quite a little complex but no i am not going to make it complex for you i am trying my best to give you in a very simple way okay so the next sub phase is basically the synthesis phase what happens in the synthesis phase that whatever the code we have got that i mean whatever the table it has created the previous sub phase has created uh, it has to work on that specific table so what it does basically uh, now is the time see what happens in the previous stage by creating that table what exactly the computer understands it basically understand the syntax the structure of the sentence whether it is according to the grammar of the language used for writing the code or not okay this is the position this is the phase where the syn syntax error are being find out if you have written suppose uh, i have written any program i have written a sentence in english whether it is correct according to the grammar or not that what we that that what i mean okay so the syntax is understood by the previous phase and now comes to the semantics semantics means meaning how does the computer think that what exactly is being said to it to do okay it has no such brain like me of course <laughs> so it has no such brain like me or you or it cannot think like that that what exactly it cannot infer anything from your instructions so what basically it does uh, in this sub phase of synthesis basically some parse trees are created now what is this parse tree oh my god a little complicated make it easy make it easy so parse tree are nothing but the you can say um, what can i say mm, yes it is the graphical representation okay of the relationship between those keywords okay like in the same way as we do have the relationships between all the words in a sentence that is respond that relationship is responsible for inferring any meaning from that particular sentence and that must be according to the grammar of that language am i right okay so in the same way what happens that there are lots of algorithms over here lots of program responsible for representing those keywords those were listed in the table in the previous phase to show the relationship between those keywords i mean how those keywords should be executed in a way that it should give the intended result what the user wants okay so in this uh, phase of uh, synthesis what is basically done the table the parse tree is created and there are different uh, different representations i mean this is the complex one after making the parse tree some simpler form of another representation is there known as the abstract syntax tree 
okay then after that again the control flow graph is created and on the basis of that control flow graph basically the code is generated okay that is very important code that is the intermediate code hmm? uh, now what type of code is this bhai we have already studied about two codes now again the third one yes of course this is the intermediate type of code generated okay that is uh, this code is neither the binary code nor the high level code okay so now our program which was written in that complex language c c plus plus python or whatever is now been transformed in the in a form which is almost near to the machine language and this is this code that we have generated after this particular phase of synthesis is basically the intermediate code okay now this code uh, is neither um, so i mean so primitive like the machine language like the binaries or not so advanced such like uh, the high level codes so it is a intermediate code using mnemonics and now what are the mnemonics now mnemonics are basically the short short codes okay for writing like a double d add is a mnemonic to add so like that so till now we have completed two phases of our entire translation process okay the first phase was pre processing phase and the second phase i was talking about was the compilation phase which was a little complex but not so much because it comprises of two different sub phases one and two okay the first phase was known as analysis phase and the second one was known as the synthesis phase so uh, in the analysis phase what was done the code was taken okay the completed code was taken and the symbol table was generated and what was there in the table it was all about the broken code in the terms of tokens was there defining all the tokens which type of tokens are there how many tokens are there and each and everything regarding that the information was there and now in the second phase of synthesis what is being done taking those information from the table some parse tree is being generated parse tree is what it is the graphical representation it is hierarchical in nature sometimes you might have created so many graph in the school or some like uh, there is a node and then coming uh, two branches from the node and then the um, child nodes is having another two branches in that way this is the hierarchical way to represent the entire keyword of a single line so that the computer must understand that which uh, of the keywords should be taken first and what should be done with it how to execute it which operation should be done in what sequence like that so after that so many different kind of representations are being made and as a result at last to when the phase is about to end a intermediate code is generated which is uh, somewhat near to the binary code now coming to the third phase oh my god i am not having any such interaction from all of you so i am feeling a little tired why don't you send me some likes so that i may feel motivated and energetic and again i would try to continue to the third phase please that's a request okay so coming to the third phase that is the assembly phase and here we talk about the conversion of this assembly language code what i was talking the intermediate code that is the assembly code basically it has to be converted in the machine language okay so who is responsible for converting this code to the machine code now assembler is again a program that is responsible for converting this intermediate code to the binary one and make it executable okay so at the end of this phase we are uh, having a code that has been already converted to the binary code okay and now in the form of executable file we are having an executable file that can be executed but still it is not going to execute on its own again there are so many things to be done okay now the change has been already been there i mean the code has been changed but still it cannot get executed so now what is left see what happens that for the execution of a program there are um, when it has to start the memory area is to be allocated to the program okay 
Now it might happen that in the program, you might have uh, used so many memory spaces to store your variables, your values in the program, okay? And it might happen that you might have used so many functions in your program, written some code over there that is supposed to be executed separately somewhere in the memory. For that purpose, what happens, when the execution of this program will start, the computer has to go through all those memory locations and fetch the information from there or write some information on those memory locations, okay? So, to understand those memory locations, it has to be done in prior. I mean, those memory locations should be linked with your programming codes so that at the time of execution of every line, it should be known to the processor that which memory location is supposed to be addressed right now for the execution purpose, okay? So this is the phase of linking. This is the linking phase where this type of work is being done, okay? The linking of all the memory areas, linking of all the libraries, what will be required, it is done in this particular phase. Now coming to the next phase, okay? Now coming to the next phase and that phase is the loading phase. And it means we are having our code ready for execution but still we cannot execute it. Why? Because it has to be loaded in the memory. Okay, so who is responsible? Which part is responsible for loading this program to the memory? It is what being done in the, this last phase and that is the loading of your executable file in the memory is done with the help of a loader, okay? It is also a software, a program responsible for loading the entire program to the main memory for execution, okay? And right from here, the control goes to the operating system. Now the operating system is responsible for the execution of the entire program with the, with the help of the processor itself and for that purpose it does the scheduling, keeps all the program in queue and thus pass each and every statement to the processor and the processor reads and thus execute your program and this is how your program gets executed. This is the entire process how a program gets executed basically. This is the technicality you can say behind those lines. So now I think that you might be clear or it may happen, it may be the case that I have explained the things in a simple way. Well, I have tried my best to explain those steps in a simple manner so that anyone can understand. Now coming to this stage, or oh really I am feeling very much tired because I am not getting any such likes, okay? Koi baat nahi. Next time. But I am still waiting. So here a recap is required that what we learned over here that to, to get a program executed, what is required that the program has been written in the high level languages and it is supposed to be converted in a low level language programming code, okay, for the execution process and the entire translation phase is there in between. The entire translation phase has been divided into different different phases like the pre-processing phase we saw where the entire source code was cleaned was de make devoid of all the comments and the white spaces. There were not requirement of that and all the pre-processing steps, directives were executed and done. And then we had the compilation phase having two different sub phases, one the analysis phase and one the synthesis phase. Within the analysis phase, a symbol table is being generated to understand the syntax of the written code in the forms of different tokens, okay? and on the basis of this particular table in the next sub phase that is the synthesis phase what was done basically the parse tree was created see here one more thing i would like to add over here that uh, so many different kind of parse trees can be created at that very stage why because to execute a single statement there are different ways can be there okay so at that very moment the optimum the optimum parse tree is selected for execution i mean that parse tree that is going to give you the least number of steps for execution and taking the least memory okay 
And this is the stage where all the syntax error is being recorded and given to reported to the user itself. Okay, so that the user could understand that okay, line by line it is shown to him on the system once a program is compiled that these are the lines having these kind of errors. And now it is the duty of the user, it is the duty of the programmer to get it error free, debug the program, okay, and recompile it. So again, the recompilation at the time of recompilation, again, the process of compilation starts and the same thing is been done until we get a code like that. Okay, the intermediate code is generated. After the intermediate code is generated, there comes the assembly phase where we saw that though that intermediate code, the assembly code was converted into the binary code and the executable file was get ready for the execution. Then the next phase was there that is known as the linking phase at this phase what was happening that all the memory areas was being linked with the program, the binary code itself and all the libraries what was required. So whatever the memory was there it has to be linked with the program for the execution purpose. And in the last phase what happened that was the loader phase the loader program was responsible for loading this executable file in the main memory for the execution purpose. Now, uh, what happens that um, now the operating system takes the charge and with the help of the processor executes your program one by one instruction by instruction. Now here uh, one more information I would like to add for the students. See, the translator program that was responsible for translating the high level language code in the low level language code uh, was a compiler we were talking about. Actually, uh, we are having one more type of translator known as interpreter. Okay, so uh, these are the language processor part of the operating system itself and responsible for th that type of conversion. Uh, the compiler and interpreter, both the softwares do the same work of converting the high level programming language code to the low level programming language code. Okay. Then what is the difference? The difference is in their working style. Okay, the difference you can feel at the time of that part uh, compilation stage. Okay, the, what compiler was doing, it was just reading all the lines at that very uh, specific phase and trying to find out all the syntax error and it was just giving the errors, reporting the errors to the user at one time. Okay, and after Debugging that program after the recompilation of the program only the code was generated and then it was linked and then it was loaded and executed. Okay, so that was the way a compiler works. But what about interpreter? What interpreter here what does that it just read the first line find out the syntax error. Okay, get all things linked the memory areas. Okay, and execute it and then it tells you that where the error is and then you are supposed to debug the line and then you are then it will start reading the next line in this way the way of working is quite different so for a interpreter we what we need that interpreter should be there in the memory for the entire execution time because for every line for each line the entire process is supposed to be done but in the case of compiler what happens but once a code is being generated, okay, the executable form is generated before linking, there is no use of the compiler then. Okay, it can be swapped out from the memory. We don't need a compiler at every time because all of the syntax error has been done, has been rectified in the earlier stage and the linking and the loading part is quite different from that. So this is what the basic difference between the compiler and the interpreter. Now I think that you might be a little clear about what the compiler does and what the interpreter does and why basically this different exists. Okay, uh, so now coming to the next part of the uh, my session right now, I would like to tell that these were the steps that should be understood by you. For especially for the students, I would tell that if you are clear at each and every step that how the process is going on and how the um, conversion is going on, how, how the execution of the program happens, actually the next part that is the part on the end of the operating system that can that is also very interesting part where you can understand that what basically an operating system does and what are the steps after the loading of the program 
those are being followed in order to execute the program till you see the output on the system okay that is the operating system part basically but that can also be discussed but it will definitely um, take an entire session to discuss that so right now i would like to uh, recap all the things what we uh, discussed so far and uh, what we discussed actually we wanted to um, understand that how the execution occurs how an instruction that what a user is giving in his own language or using any programming language how it has been understood by the computer system and how it's get ready for the execution okay so for that we have already been uh, discussed uh, till now about different phases we have talked about uh, like uh, the translation phase the pre processing phase was there then the compilation phase having two uh, sub phases that is the analysis and the synthesis phase and of course uh, after that was assembly phase and after that was linking phase and after that was the loading phase okay now i think it is clear to all of you might be clear because i have tried my best to give you the simpler form of what exactly uh, is the process and how the executions goes on and here comes the term the compiler and the interpreter we try to understand what is the difference between a compiler and an interpreter because those both of the programs are basically the language processors the language processors basically the special type of softwares which are the part of system softwares here and which are responsible for this type of translations okay and what is the working what is the difference between the working of these two different type of language processors is that the compiler keeps on reading the entire code in one go creates the table the symbol table then the syntax to understand the syntax and then to understand the infer the semantics the meaning the parse tree has been created the intermediate code is created okay at this stage whatever the error is there in the compilation time that is the syntax error is there it is rectified by the user at this very stage and after the all of the rectification of the program the entire code has been changed to the assembly language code okay and this is the way how a compiler works in the case of compiler the linking and loading of the program are separate phases after the compilation phases but when we talk about the interpreter what it does it just take to read the instruction say, uh, do all the phases of the compilation also that phase i mean making uh, breaking the code in the terms of tokens and then creating the parse tree whatever and then linking is also been done so that the execution can be take can take place in the um, in the terms of uh, sorry interpreter then it reports you the bug okay where is the bug after the execution you get that okay this is the bug you are supposed to rectify the entire line and then it will go on to the next line move on to the next line so the interpreter works line by line line by line conversion and the compiler does in one go okay so now i think that the students might be clear on writing when you are writing your answer in the examination especially in the board examination which is very much specific about the keywords in your answer you must adhere to the writing of the keywords including those keywords in your answer okay now i think then after understanding the complexity of the entire process you might be able to write the answer in a correct way so that it can fetch good marks to you now uh, as the time is running out and we are coming to the end of the uh, session uh, what i would like to tell you that uh, the second part how basically i would like to add a little one so that you may be clear about uh, the entire execution process what happens that operating system when the control is given to the operating system it uh, makes a schedule okay it helps the processor in such a way such that it is the assistant over there suppose i am the processor and the operating system is going to be my assistant or it is going to assist me in processing in executing all the lines of your code that is written in binary and for that purpose it is not the single program in the memory that is loaded at that particular time that is to be executed okay there are lots of uh, programs 
line up over there each and every execution is there and i have to do a lot of work in if i am a processor see when every program comes to the memory near me as a processor in the main memory it becomes a process for me okay so i have to take the process and work on it and give it to you give it to the operating system again so the operating system will help me by making an another table okay that will take care of each and every process it's a, a little bit complex one where a table is created for each and every process in the queue that is supposed to be executed each and every code in the queue that i am supposed to execute as a processor so how i am going to understand that which one is supposed to be executed so for that purpose a table is made that is an abstract table basically logical table is created which contains the information about each and every process okay each process has a table that is known as process control block pcb okay the name of the process is there the files the about files are there what the memory locations has been linked to it and each and every different type of application information is there in that table okay so according to that table i will start executing the first uh, the first instruction will be given to me using the control unit it will take the responsibility and send it to me and being a processor i will execute one uh, statement okay and i will do it in first and just in this way the collaboration of myself being a processor the operating system and the memory different memory areas like registers which is very much nearest to the processor the cache and the ram itself being a team okay these all parts will work as a team to get the program executed and give you the output on your screen okay whatever we shall process the processor will process and create the output and send it to the output unit through the control unit through the operating system and whatever the output device you are having you are going to get the output on that okay and in this way basically the program executes oh my god such a complex process mat to thak gayi okay so now you can understand that how complex a process of executing a single instruction given by you to the comp computer system is so you can understand that what a good gift you are having in the form of computer system what a good servant that it can execute your instructions and see how much labor it does for executing a single instruction given by you okay so in this way the execution of a program happens and beside the execution there are lots and lots of hardware and software programs are collaborating with each other working as a team having one goal with them to make the program execution happen in a better way so that it can give you the better experience the output desired by you okay so it is always a team work and of course one work at a time now um, coming to the end of my session now it's 11:18 a little part is left uh, now uh, see uh, there are so many question now it is time to take some of the questions which i would like to answer and i would definitely try my best to answer Mm, I can read here. Okay, uh, Mr. Anurag was there, uh, who has written that execution of programming. Very keen to know the details. And uh, Anurag sir, uh, please uh, definitely tell me in the comments whether I was able to uh, give you the my best or not, or whether it was up to the mark or not. Definitely, your feedback is going to motivate me and make my next session. more interactive and more informative thank you so much for putting such questions to me uh abhinav sir is there who is saying the task will not be completed actually i am not getting the question uh, abhinav sir properly could you please define your question in a better way so that i can answer your question 
that what task you are talking about and why it is not getting completed till the extent of my knowledge i will definitely try to answer please do uh, write in the comment section now one question is there what is the best programming language to design video games okay there are lots and lots of programs okay uh, it depends upon what type of video games you are trying to design actually uh, so many languages are there that gives you the facility to design games some are specifically made for that okay so you can find out this answer in a better way using your google okay see what happens if i tell you about one or two softwares that is because i feel personally that that is uh, those softwares can be used for that given purpose okay but it might not be the case all the time okay to answer your question i have to go in detail that what kind of game you want to design and what prior knowledge you are having of writing a program okay it depends on your convenience and your knowledge base that how much you have learned about computer programming languages there are different options okay so you can go for any of the option and definitely in some other session i would try to make a different session regarding this only that what different type of softwares can be utilized for different different work like if you have asked about the video games or different type of games there are lots and lots of i cannot name one or two right now but definitely for the next time i would take your question keep it in mind and frame my answer like that going in depth with the latest uh, whatever the technologies and whatever the softwares are there we will definitely take okay um now oh ma'am has put a question what languages can you use for ai programming ma'am there uh, for artificial intelligence where there are so many languages right now the python which we are trying to teach our students at the age of 11th and 12th classes that is the best suited programming language for ai ai writing programs in artificial intelligence basically i am a research scholar right now and i am using the same programming language for doing my ai part because i am doing the research in the same area that is of artificial intelligence and basically i am working on the text mining and for that purpose i am utilizing python so there are r orange different languages that can be utilized again here ma'am actually what happens in the artificial intelligence it is a quite vast area that encompasses different type of parts okay each and every part for each and every part you can use different languages but being a whole process it depends upon what actually you want to do inside the artificial intelligence because within the artificial intelligence come the machine uh, machine language i mean uh, deep learning is there deep learning comes within the deep learning what we do what we, we try to make our system so smart that it can behave just like the human being and take the decisions like that for that purpose it is quite different one part is there nlp part natural Uh, language processing nlp okay so in that part what we do we try to understand the natural language of the human beings and for that purpose we are using different languages different um, languages but in as a whole we can i can say that python is definitely the best and the um, hottest program right now it is the hot favorite program of all the programmers all the scientists all over the world because of the ease of understanding this language the syntax and the modules we are having and so much uh, being a user i can give to the community like that so python is the best language right now and that is why this language has been introduced at 10th level 11th level and 12th level because it is going to be the future language not only for ai for iot etc internet of things if we talk about the big data everything everywhere uh now i think i should scroll down so that i may get any other questions okay ma'am has one more question for me she has asked can we have our children get involved in ai way maybe middle grade 6 7 in 8 ma'am uh, here i would like to suggest you that at this level also there are uh, so many softwares over there that serves as the base or as the platform to understand the artificial intelligence on the higher level for that purpose uh, what i can say that 
there are so many softwares that can be utilized. Like uh, when we talk about the robotics part, there are some specific softwares and entire kit comes that can be used by these great students also. Six, seven, and eight. Eight students, they can use it and make small, small program. Like they can program the entire electricity, the light lighting system of their room that can be remote controlled and it can be very interactive one. Also, we can have so many designing softwares with us that helps student design different animations like that. That is also a part of artificial intelligence because nowadays we are having that kind of software that is too much smart and that can behave something like you. I mean, using those softwares, they can understand basically how the motion is being shown in the picture, in the animations itself. So that is also a part, we can also uh, use those type of softwares at these grades. Actually, what, uh, what a strategy should be followed, according to me, is that, yes, at this stage, so see, we can even teach our student in the day-to-day -day life that how artificial intelligence is being imbibed in our day-to-day -day life. Even if how it happens that we use home appliances, okay? that works accordingly few years previously we don't have that kind of washing machine that can sense the weight of the cloth we are putting inside and according to that weight it sets itself the water level is set and according to the type of the uh, clothes it can set itself to how the it can change the washing modes so how it happens it is uh, it is one of the kind of artificial intelligence now what we are doing, we are having our mobile phones that can recognize our voice and it can recognize our retina over there and the fingertips also. The biometrics are there. These are all the part of the artificial intelligence. What actually artificial intelligence means in a general way, we can understand it in a way that it is the branch of the computer system which enables the computer to imbibe some artificial intelligence in itself because intelligence is a characteristic of living being like human beings we are intelligent ones we can go through we can um, sense our um, surrounding and according to our previous heuristics we can just uh, react to that right now whatever the situation we are in okay so we are trying to develop this kind of capability in the computers and this is what the artificial intelligence is all about so there can be lots of sessions regarding that and i hope you like my session and please keep on giving me likes and your feedbacks as a part of the comments so that I may get motivated and each and every time uh, your feedbacks will make me improve myself and make my session more interactive and I think more informative also for the next time. If you do have, okay, one more thing I forgot, I forgot, nobody, nobody told me. I put a single question to all of you. Now it's time for all of you to answer my question. The very first question what I put was, if you are in a situation, then there are two persons trying to interact. One is the instructor and one is the worker. So what option you are going to give them, what type of technology you will suggest, what type of gadget you are going to suggest them, so that the communication should be established between them effectively and the work should be done. So now it's your turn. Please do write in the comment section so that I can get an idea that what was going in your mind in the entire session. And I hope you love this session. And thank you very much for being with me, making this session so successful. It was very nice talking to all of you, interacting with you. And yes, of course, having so many good questions. Mm. Uh, Ma'am has one more thing written for me. I would definitely like to read that because that is for me. Uh, Ma'am has said me thank you <laughs> for interesting and uh, perhaps we are going to plan 
some of the things that we can inculcate in our curriculum or the extracurriculum in our school's projects, okay? So for the next time, we can think that we are going to have so many new and interactive type of programs being integrated in our school, the City International School, where we are trying to place new things, new innovative ideas, and we are working as a team to give you the best experience and making it interactive and working as a team. That is the key uh, word for our and I hope all of you are fit and fine again and may God bless all of us and please do take care of yourself. And at this is critical time of COVID-19, we all of us suffering with this and please stay at home. Do take care of the elderly person. It is very important to do take care of them. Do take care of the children. Enjoy your day. Please don't go out. Please follow whatever the instructions have been given to us by our respected Prime Minister. It is all for us, for our betterment. And thank you very much once more for being with me. Bye-bye.